Who's this chick right? I happen to have a cameo in Sizzix. I love my die cutting machine, and I have lots of dies and files I cut from plain and patterned paper, but they just lose their appeal when I bring them to my layouts. How do I make them more interesting and integrate them with my store bought items? Glitter Girl, can you help? Who's this chick? Dr. Dynamic Die Cuts? Of course I can. We're actually going to split this topic into two adventures. So this week I'm covering the kind of die cuts that you use with a manual machine. So metal die cuts, or dies, and things like that that you use to cut without your computer, without any cartridges, just the metal dies. You can use all sorts of different machines for that. Um, and I have a big shot, but there are all different things you can use. And next week, we'll look at specifically at electronic die cutters, like the Silhouette and other options like that. So today, one layout using manual die cutting. And I just wanted to start by showing you my die cutting supplies. Now, I really don't think that you need lots and lots and lots and lots of dies to be able to use dies effectively. The best way is to look at what types of embellishments you really use, and then those are the dies that you'll get the most for your money. So I use three sets more than anything else. They're all nested sets, and they're very plain designs. And um, please excuse the slightly messy way I keep them, but this is just what works best for me. And that's circles, pinked circles. And this one, which is like a scalloped square or a label shape that they call Labels 1. These are all spellbinders. They're similar products in different brands, and you can have a look at, at different options. And I'll link all sorts of different dies underneath this if you're looking at two-piece, so you can see all sorts of different things that are available at the two-piece store. But these are the three that I use the most. I also have a similar one to this, but in a scallop instead of a pinked edge. And um, I think it's that I use the pinked more because I don't have scallop, I don't have punches that are similar. So I have a, a pinked punch that's just the small circle, but in scallops I have quite a few sizes and I don't in the pinked. So I think that's why I use this one most in dies. So I have these three that I use um, the most. Of the thicker types of dies, the ones with the foam and the plastic block, Everything I have, barring one, is flowers. They're all different designs of flowers, and then the one that's not a flower is a butterfly. So those are the sorts of things that I find I use over and over again. At one point, I collected all sorts of different shapes, and I found I would cut them once or twice and then never use them again. And for me, the best thing would be to use a die for a shape that you're going to cut many, many times. The sort of thing that you might have on lots of pages or if you're going to do a mass batch of cards that sort of thing that then makes a, a real physical manual die a really good investment. For the papers today I'm using this background sheet from the Simple Stories. Uh, it's actually from their camping range but it's just a nice wood grain and then the papers are from For the Record 2 which is a new release from Echo Park and it comes in two colorways so a, a blue and aqua colorway and then this pinker orangey version and so I'm going to use a little bit of each put together and then also some stickers that you may already have or you may want to get before they're not available anymore. These are from American Crafts, and they came out in last autumn's Nightfall collection. So if you search for Nightfall, you'll find um, things like that, but it's also in the shopping list. And they're chalkboard stickers. You can write on them with a white pen or with a white colored pencil or actual chalk, and they look really great. You get the, these two sheets, and I've used some on these sheets. Um, you get both sheets in one pack, and right now they're on 75% off, which makes them a ridiculously good deal. And they're just lovely for layering, lovely for adding something when you want to use black instead of white. So just wanted to point those out in case either you have them and you should use them, or if you don't have them and you might want to grab them while they're such a good bargain. So getting started today, I have a piece of paper cut to size that is something I find really useful when I'm working on die cuts. And that's a pattern like this that has all sorts of different elements on it that kind of fill up the pattern, especially if they don't overlap. So this one is perfect for that sort of thing. And I've cut it to six inches by just slightly smaller than the 12. So I have this to take up a nice big chunk of the page and a little different photo combination today than normal. I have these that came from a 
a photo booth at a friend's wedding. So I have one large one and then four little prints of all different images. And so I'm going to use this box as a bit of an anchoring piece and then be able to put things in the top as if they were um, kind of sitting in a pocket or resting on a shelf, whichever uh, idea you like better. So I'll have the photo here and my journaling block and my title here to take up this space and then I'm going to use this space down here at the bottom to separate the four photos and I think maybe they'll go quite far down the page which then gives me this nice space in the middle to embellish and shapes like this are great for layering with dies. So I'm going to use some of those plain die shapes to cut some elements and then I'm also going to mix in things that are pre-made or, or store-bought embellishments. So I grabbed some different things that would match. These are from Studio Calico and their little embellishment kit, which also includes these flowery brads. It includes some yellow ones as well. So those are from Heyday, and it's a little set of all different chipboard die cuts and, and brads and sequins, all sorts of cute things. And then I also wanted to bring in a little bit of pink because even though there's not pink in the photos, there was pink at her wedding. Her wedding colors were pink. So I want to include a little bit of pink so that when I have it with other pages from her wedding in my album, the pink still is present here. So that's why I brought in those flowers and then also a little Amy Tangerine sketchbook die cut and a basic gray flag. Okay, so that's where I'm going to start and I'm going to grab my die cutter so I can cut some other layers to embellish all the way across the middle. So here's that basic starting point with that large box. I just added a strip for the photos to sit on at the bottom of the page so they weren't kind of floating and it's a little bit easier to see them and tucked the larger photo in here at the top. Then I want to add my space for journaling in this space and I'm going to do my journaling on some cards cut from the accent sheets in the For the Record collection. And then I also have this H for Happy and I'm going to include that in the title and add a little bit more. So I'm just going to tuck these in and with both of these I'm going to add foam squares at the top but keep the rest flat just so there's a little bit of dimension so it looks like they're tucked in and on top of each other. And I'm not too worried about keeping the chair, oh, and I've done that on the wrong end. Let's try again. I'm not too worried about keeping the chair in the design. So I don't mind if that gets covered up. Did I do this one upside down too? Yep. So I'll try that again. And then I can either write on one and then the other, or what I think I'll more likely do is write across as if they were all one piece. So just flatten this out a little bit, make sure that that's going to be possible. And then add this one in too. Make sure I get this one the right way up. So that gives me space for my journaling, the start of my title, and then I also want to add something up here so I have something in the top um, kind of top section of the page. So these are also from that same sheet where I cut the journaling boxes, and I'm just going to use them both even though I cut them into separate pieces and add them up here in the corner. And the the made with love um caption works in this case because she the bride um, she made the sweater for me in the picture so she knitted it all by hand and that's what I'm going to journal about is that particular lovely gift so that works out as a, a sensible wording for this page so those are my major paper elements and then I'm going to start embellishing in this area and then I'll add my title wording over the top of that. So when I have a nice large element like this, then I can build more layers on top. One thing I really like about using 
stickers that come on a clear backing is that you can just move them around until you find something that works. When I first pulled out the paper and these stickers, I thought I could flip it the other way around and use this large um, turquoise circle with a large sticker. But then when I overlapped it, I saw I'd only get that tiny, tiny little edge of turquoise on the edge and that wasn't going to work. So instead, I could move it around by looking at all the different sticker options until I found something that worked well. And this plain circle inside that uh, more ornate drawing is exactly what I need. So just add that in the center there and then that gives me a start to all the layers that I can pop on top to add a bit more detail there. And I can also look to see if there are any other shapes that would be a good match elsewhere. I've already used all the other plain circles. I think I'll just start with this one for now and I can always come back and add more. And of course I can actually put these right through the die cutter. So if you use all the shapes that you like and then there are a few left over. For example, I don't think I'll probably use this pumpkin. So I might use this with the die cutter to find and um, to use a shape that will fit here. So that will be my plan of action. Using my Big Shot and the nested dies in the pinked and plain circles, I've cut out a few different pieces to start. So I, I had the starting point of using that chalkboard circle sticker on the large space and then I looked around for two more spots that I could fill. So I took that pumpkin sticker that I probably wasn't going to use and just ran it through the die cutter with the circle die and came up with these two circles that will fit on those pieces of the design. And to find the right shape it's just a case of of taking the nested die and moving it around the page until you find something that looks like a good um, a good match. So I want a line that's going to go inside and still leave me part of the design showing around the edge so that I get the benefit of the pattern paper but then I'm going to add more detail in the layers above that. So I have those two and because these were stickers now I can just peel off the backing and add them over the top and then some paper elements to stack on top of that. And the nested dies, if you like stacked embellishments, the nested dies are going to be one of the most useful tools you can have and because it's like having a set of punches and all the different gradations. So you can then use the different shapes together. So I did the pinked circles in a pink b-side from the same for the record 2 collection and basically I just cut out two of the cards that I didn't think I would use as they were so that I could use the b-side on that pipe on that pattern paper it's a really nice concentric circle design so now I have these two in smaller sizes or these three pieces sorry in smaller sizes in the black circles so I can start to layer up there, but I don't always just want to stack circle on circle on circle. I could then just take this piece and go in the middle and, and the, it needs a little bit more variety and not just circles to really create some interest. So I had those separate die cut pieces that I started with at the beginning and I wanted to include this one because it has the stitching at the top to match the theme even though it's a little different stitching than what's in the pictures. So I'm going to add this to the circle and then continue to build on top. I'll just add this one flat and I'm not adding any adhesive here so I can come back and add some twine or or something if to the design if the end stack still shows the the top of the tag there. And then so some layers will be flat to the page and some will have a bit of dimension. Uh, if you have lots of layers and you add pop dots to every single one, they'll get very tall very fast. So I tend to just alternate and do a few flat, a few raised, and that gives you a bit more variety. And I think because these were the chalkboard stickers, I'd love to add that similar detail here. So I'm just going to grab a white pen to do some little dots around the edge. Just really quick and easy. And if you're using more of the sticker, you're going to have um, more of it on show rather than quite so much covered up. 
A white pen or a white colored pencil works great on these for a bit of a chalkboard effect. But it doesn't have to be a school theme or anything like that. So um, it's just a nice reversal of, of white on black instead of black on white. And you could certainly use black cardstock in this instance, but I do like to um, try and use something for my stash. If, if I have an element that I'm not going to use, I might as well try and just adapt it as, uh, as can be. And I could still get like a little punch design here, a little heart or star or something like that. So then it becomes a piece that's uh, useful rather than gets wasted. So I think I'll add these with pop dots with the smaller pieces. These are smaller embellishments than this one. And you'll end up usually with fewer layers because you just don't have the number of, of rings to layer up. So sometimes that means you have fewer flat pieces. You can have more that are dimensional. Just a balance to your page, really. Okay. And then I want to find other things that can go on top of each of these. This one is always going to be a little different than these two. So if I have a, an item that I only have one of, then it's best to put it with this larger one. And then I can have things where I have two of them can go on the smaller ones and I can make these almost identical. I'm going to go to the 12 by 12 sticker sheet from this collection. And so then I'm looking for something that would be a good match to the color scheme and the size of this space here. What I was really conscious of is that this is now picked up the um, the back layers are that craft tan color and the black, and then I've jumped into the aqua and the pink, but I wanted to make sure that I got some of the blue in there because that was supposed to be throughout the page. So if I can find a blue sticker that would fit, then that would be ideal. And there's this little doily. There's also a flower here. So I might use that one elsewhere on the page. So this one is a good candidate. And with stickers, I tend to go ahead and put pop dots on the back but not stick them or not um, not peel the paper off so that then I can move things around until I'm completely happy with the arrangement. Now this can go right in the center but to me that's too big of an outside circle of the pink and this would be a bit more pleasing on the side which then means I need some sort of element here. It doesn't need to be a circle. It could be. It could be a smaller, um, a smaller kind of circle similar to that size or it can be a label, something um, horizontal. Now there is a horizontal label here, but it's that same blue. So I want to separate the colors by layer. So I'm looking for things in different colors on the sheet and I could use perhaps the yellow. Actually, yeah, there is a little bit of yellow here already and here, so I think that might work well. So this can give me a horizontal element here. Then I can add this little doily shape so that it's going to overlap all those different layers and bring everything together. And then that gives me some space for some wording here and maybe something small here like gems or um, pearls or something something small and maybe sparkly there. So that gives me these two that I need to finish. Now originally I wanted to incorporate these die cuts but they are too big for the scale. The, if I were to add this like a rosette it, it's just too big. So I'm going to take one and cut it into two pieces um, and I'm thinking I I have this notion that I might want to put this tag in here, this little flag. So I'm thinking I'll mimic that, which is a similar shape to what this was originally, but I'll just cut it into two pieces the opposite way. And then I can add that little edge to the end. This gives me a scale that's a bit more useful so that I can work that into the layers. 
So just add some ink to those and I'll have a look at the sticker sheet to see if there's something that's small and has two of um, that I could use. And in fact, there's two of these little floral groupings that bring all the different colors from the pattern paper together and they're quite small. So I think we're onto a winner there. I'm gonna tuck these so that they fit in between the two layers I've already added. So each one has a little turquoise pennant and then I have those two tiny little flower stickers. And I'll add that to the top of each of these near the pennant. So instead of going right in the center, I'm building things slightly over to the side to create the little grouping. Then I also had two of these brads that I picked out at the beginning. So I'm going to add them so that they're just slightly, um, they're going to be on the background, but they're going to overlap all those layers in this little grouping. So they'll be kind of in that little corner there. So that's probably enough for each of those small groupings. Then I'll just add a few little more pieces to this larger one. I have that flag on a little stick here. And I'm thinking what I want to do is connect this cluster to a photo. So the stick can do that by just pointing in the right direction, making a little visual link there. So I'll just arrange it so that it touches all these layers here at the top and then brings your eye down to the picture. And I also had a little butterfly and he can fit right in this grouping here to give it a bit more variety in the shape and the direction and bring all those separate colors together. So that gives me a mix of both store-bought pieces and hand die cut or um, pieces cut on the die cutting machine, manual die cuts. And so they actually work really well hand in hand together because the planar shapes that I've cut by hand from the pattern papers bring in a little bit of an anchor. So you end up with things like plain circles and pink circles that can really um, make it easier for you to build all those random shapes on top. If I took out the circles and the pink circles and just had um, the more abstract shapes, they won't fit together quite as well. So that's one of my biggest tricks for using your manual die cutter is to use those really versatile shapes to be able to link together all the more random shapes of your store-bought items. So at this point, I'm going to add my writing and my title and then just any really small finishing touches. For the title, I had a look for different colors and the turquoise letter stickers I had were a bit too bright and the blues I had tended to be cream based like the blue tiles that I've used in the last few videos and they were a bit too cream to go with the kind of distressed white in the elements that are already on the page. So instead I decided to go back to that idea of wanting the pink to repeat throughout the different pages for this wedding and started with some pink thickers and then because that color was a bit different than everything else that was on the page, added just a little bit more to tie it together. So there's a bit of pink up here in the corner and a bit down here at the bottom. And although there's just that three shot of that particular pink on this page. Now I'll set those letters aside and make sure that I use them on a few more pages in this section so that everything flows from one to the other. And then um, I'll really like how uh, how the, the colors connect when you turn the pages. I'm going to call it finished here today. I'm not going to add um, more gems or things on top. I had a little try with the idea of adding these little um, white candy dots, but today I think I like it a little bit plainer. And um, so I'm going to leave those off this time, but on another day I might have added lots more. So your challenge this week is to use some manual die cuts on your page and mix them in with your store-bought products. If you don't have a manual die cutter, please don't despair. You can still participate this week. You could use punches or you could hand cut things using traced basic shapes. You could print out a page of circles or you could trace around different things in your kitchen and all sorts of, um, of ways to make basic shapes that you could use 
a die cutter to cut, or you could cut with your scissors. I hope you'll share your results in the gallery, and then don't forget, next week we're going to do part two of this using electronic die cutters and the different kinds of shapes you can create there. Thanks for watching! Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.